Hi guys and welcome to Feywood. Now as you guys know I've been preparing for the Goblin Ball, getting my costume ready and all of that and taking you through all that preparation. So I wanted to share the Goblin Ball footage with you guys today. I am also going to have a channel update at the end of the video as well so for any of my regular viewers if you want to know what's going on then just wait to the end and I'll have a chat about that but first things first we'll talk about the goblin ball now I will say I didn't get that much footage this time and that was a combination of things partly I was just in a mindset of just wanting to attend this time it's been so long and so many things happening in the world that there was just I don't know a part of me that was like Oh, I just don't want to um, I just don't want to think about it too much I just want to sort of go and uh, not worry about trying to capture so much footage and all of that so I really didn't do any talking to camera stuff while I was there at all I realized and the other part of that too is I had a really large pair of wings on and uh, because the venue was a bit smaller than I was anticipating and I couldn't really move around very easily uh, and it would have been hard anyway regardless of the size of the venue just purely because of the size of the wings. Uh, for anyone who saw them in the flesh, you'll, <laughs> you know what I mean. And for anyone that I whacked with my wings, cause I know there was some people, <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> so that I don't hit anyone. <laughs> um, my husband was really trying to help me um, not to do that, but it's obviously really difficult to know where they are and what's exactly happening behind you. So I just, when I'm wearing wings, I just really try to move slowly and turn slowly but even with doing that I managed to well, at least get in the <laughs> periphery of people's faces and things like that so <laughs> apologies to anyone that I've like attacked with my wings <laughs> you guys know this costume was a little bit challenging for me and at first I was really feeling disheartened. The fit just wasn't right uh, and I was almost at one point going to change what I was going to do and wear something that I didn't even make just because I didn't want to go there and feel uncomfortable in what I was wearing. But at the end of the day I just focused on all the things that I wasn't happy with and tried to address each one of those things and I talked about that a little bit in the last video I showed where it was just those final touches. I didn't film what I was doing in the final stages because it was really coming to crunch time and for anyone who's gone to events like this or made costumes and things you know that like it can get a bit hairy at the end if you're trying to finish things quickly so uh, and filming something while you're doing it adds an extra layer of time that it takes to do it because you're setting up the shot each time and you're moving the camera each time to get different shots. So I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to do what I have to do, make the changes I have to make, and I'll talk to you guys about it after the case. So I, that's what I did. Now this year I actually got ready at home, which was quite nice actually, because it's uh, quite a challenge when you're trying to pack a costume. Uh, and, you know, I've never had to sort of take a costume a long distance. I know there are some people that, you know, go to events in other countries or other states and that's another challenge in itself because the you've got to pack everything so that it can go on a plane. Uh, and, you know, in the previous times I've ended up uh, with a friend, we'll get like a hotel room and it's just a nice like fun time as well, like hanging out and getting ready and that sort of thing. But there is that challenge of like, it's got to fit in a suitcase. You've got to make sure you get everything you've got to get. And it's easy to miss things that you wish you had abroad and you're like, oh God damn it. Uh, <laughs> there's been nothing that's been like major, but there's definitely been times where, you know, I've got hotel room and thought, oh God damn it. I wanted to wear blah, 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 like false lashes, or I should have brought this other bit of makeup or I should have done blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I didn't have to worry about any of that, so that part was nice. Now, I didn't film, you know, me going into the ball or anything like that. Like I said, I didn't get a lot of footage, uh, but when we hopped out of the car, my husband was like trying to help me with my wings because I was um, struggling to pull the straps. You can readjust the straps on them the, or the way that I've got them so that the clip sits wherever you want it, and I just had it too high, so I couldn't like 
grab it and pull the pull them tight. So he was trying to help me with that. And just as he did that, he turned around and whacked the wizard staff that I'd made him and knocked it over. <laughs> and the globe on it uh, broke off, went skidding under a, a car, and it was like lighting up as it was going to. <laughs> so there's this light up ball just skidding across the road. <laughs> and I just, oh, I gotta say, if I'm honest, I cracked it. I was really upset. Not so much in the fact that he broke it, but just that he broke it before he even got into the venue. I just wanted someone, like, people to see his costume finished, because, again, I'd spent a lot of time on his costume as well. And so I was, like, really looking forward to... Because I, I really like that stuff, and uh, I, I just was very happy with how it came out. And it just was a little bit um, lacklustre without the glowing ball on top. And he didn't get to go into the ball with the globe on it at all. <laughs> so it was in a bag the whole time. So yeah, I was a little bit upset at that. And I feel like as I got in the door, I wasn't even sure if I could fit through the door. And we quickly realized that, you know, I wouldn't be able to move about the venue very much. So our main objection all night was just for me not to whack people with my wings. So my husband was like more focused on looking after that than I think anything else on the night. We tried to kind of tuck ourselves into a corner of the room so that my wings weren't whacking anyone. Walking on the mountains, it gets rid of my vision. Oh, you can't see very well? Uh, no, uh, yeah, I'll get back to uh, I'm the same as you with the wings off that tent. <laughs> yeah. So really on one hand I was so glad to be able to wear my wings out. I made them during 2020 and they had never seen any event. They'd only been here at home. The only time they'd been outside before that was me dancing down my driveway when I was first filming uh, creating the wings. So I definitely wanted to wear them out and, and I am glad I did. People really got a, a kick out of it and, and that's really my goal when it comes to costumes. Like, you know, I obviously love the craftsmanship of costumes. That's, you know, my first love. But then it's also to delight people, you know, to just give them something to get a kick out of that, you know, I don't know, bringing some joy to people uh, by seeing your costume. You know, I love that so much. So people did seem to really enjoy the wings and I'm really glad I got to wear them to something where people were able to see them and, and enjoy them with me. So that was great. But conversely, <laughs> I regretted the costume in a little ways because I really wasn't able to get a around very easily. For that reason, I didn't really go around and film people and, you know, chat to people and stuff like that. So I just di didn't get a lot of footage for that reason. I was taking footage from where I was and really wasn't uh, getting footage elsewhere. So I haven't talked about the theme of this year's Goblin Ball and it was called Exordium. And there was all these different realms of creatures, like fey creatures and so forth, with like backstory and descriptions of the land and all of sort of things. So it really kept it wide open for people to choose what sort of costume they wanted to wear. Now, there's a lot of detail in all of the backstory and so forth, so I will link to the website. So if you want to read on uh, any of the lands and themes and that sort of thing, that you'll be able to read into it a bit more in a bit more detail.
believe the idea was that all of these different fey creatures had got together and were worshipping the ancients and somehow some ancient texts had been found and translated but translated incorrectly so that basically we were all worshipping uh, the mother of Pentina or at least saying her name and um, you know she was actually quite an evil person so uh, it was an interesting twist on the story and yeah cle cleverly done. Today it is custom that we gather once more that we can return the ancients to life. This is our act of devotion. This is our thanks. In the name of Pintina, Darko, and the blessing of the ancients, we gather that we may be blessed. And we all say, Malforia. Malforia. Very good. Can I hear you make some noise? Raise your voices so that the ancients can hear you. Very good. Please welcome to the altar, Alora Mastai.
different costumes on the night and I so enjoy seeing everyone dressed up and getting like inspiration from other people's like creativity it's, yeah my favorite part of the night which is probably not surprising <laughs> hopefully I got some reasonable footage of some of it like I said I didn't do a lot of filming so I'm not sure what I've got there and I haven't sat and watched through all my footage as I'm sitting here right now but there were some fantastic photos taken on the night so I will share those with you as well Photos were taken by Three Fates Media or AJ Penrose and Mark which are taken by Who and they're both photographers are fantastic so uh, definitely check them out. I'll link their details in the description box as well. And I managed to make it to the top three with the costumes which was great and then Tracy won and her costume was absolutely amazing so hopefully I'll have some good footage for you guys otherwise I'll try and find some of the photos of her costume because there's so many elements to it it was really great and it had this bee motif um, so much of the detail was uh, hard to see unless you came up because it was just like it was so intricate and yeah she had these beautiful big bees but then the whole costume itself was themed as a bee and she had like the antenna of the bee and like the colors and so forth of it and yeah she made you know her whole headpiece out of thermoplastic and same with the pauldrons as well which looked amazing so yeah it was a fantastic costume and well deserved so congratulations to Tracy I really hope I do have some good footage of the costumes but yeah there were some fantastic ones uh, Wendy had this amazing costume as well she was also in the top three hers was this um, death moth and the back of hers was fantastic I didn't realize at first when she came up to me um, all the detail on the back of her robe she had this furry uh, robe on and then she had turned around and walked away and I realized that it was of a moth and you know it had the uh, skull on it and all of that and again, I hope that I have some either good footage or photos that I can share of her costume because just amazing. Uh, but everyone who got up there had amazing costumes and there was other great costumes in the night as well. So yeah, I'm really hopeful that I've got some good footage. Like I keep saying that, but I, I really just feel like I didn't film it all this time. <laughs>
And as always, there's always the trinket trading as well, which is really cool. So I did put some trinkets together for Dan, and then I brought these little butterflies that like you can turn and they fly. Uh, I couldn't get out to really do a lot of trinket trading and I wasn't carrying my bag with me all the time So a couple of times people were asking me about trinkets and I would have to scramble to get my bag oh, I don't know why I kept putting it down. I should have just held on to it So I could have just kept trading but anyway, so I did get a couple of little bits and pieces um, You know little trinkets a rose like a couple of necklaces And it's such a fun thing to do the trinket trading I've started, I think I've mentioned this before, but on my tree back here, the light up tree, it's my trinket tree. So when I come home, I'll pop the little trinkets on my tree as decoration. Can you hear this? <laughs> Loki! He's obsessed. He's not coming in because he will wreck those wings. No, you can't come in. Oh, I know. Mean mama. So anyway, I'll find a way to put all of the trinkets on the tree. Some of them, if they hang, then obviously I can just easily hang them on. But if others uh, don't have a way to hang up, I sometimes put a little bit of ribbon on, like maybe glue it on or something like that so I can glue them and put it onto the tree. One thing I will say, I'm not very good at being in character. I, I try to be and like I definitely did not have time to really think about it this time. So. For me and Dan, and I, I didn't tell Dan about that either because I didn't want him to feel the pressure of feeling like he had to have a character or whatever. Um, but he said afterwards, you should have told me. I would have, you know, thought of something. So basically it was like, when people were asking, it was like, oh, I'm, I'm Lady Faye, you know, which <laughs> is just exactly what I am anyway. But it, yeah, and he was like the green man. So we were really just not prepared for... <laughs> being a character um, but I feel like towards the end of the night I kind of started to embody a character who was like this slightly shrill slightly ditzy hyperactive kind of fae uh, that really didn't know what was going on <laughs> and that was kind of fun but yeah I kind of wish that I had of thought about that a little bit before the night. Anyway, I better wrap this up before Loki scratches his way through the whole door because he's going nuts out there. <laughs> Now I did mention there would be some channel updates at the end. So I'm basically changing my channel upload schedule in that there's not going to be one. <laughs> These last few years have been really long for all of us, me included. And while I love my channel, it has become really tough to do the weekly uploads. And even though I did sort of do a shift at the start of the year where I was thinking I would do like three videos a week or what have you and some other periods maybe with more videos and all of that. I'm finding that really difficult, not just like personally and for the channel. So it's hard to balance life and the channel with all the work that goes in and the fact that I, I also work a normal job. Um, I don't make any living off of YouTube. In fact, I put more money into YouTube than I get out of it. And so, you know, it's a labor of love really that I do these videos. Uh, and I'm finding more and more that I'm either rushing to get content out because it's my, you know, weekly video time and it's time to get a video out. And then I feel like the video is not what I wanted it to be because I'm just I'm just trying to get, you know, get to the deadline basically. And then if things are happening in real life, which have have been, um, you know, good things, bad things, whatever, um, but just life happens, then suddenly you've got even less time. So uh, I'm sure you guys can imagine the time that is involved in the projects themselves and then the editing side of it, and then trying to do that every week everything suffers you know the the project itself is not as good as I want it to be the editing is not as good as I want it to be um, and then I'm also feeling like I don't have time to do anything else in life as well so the upshot is I've decided to not have an upload schedule <laughs> now this doesn't mean that I'm not going to be filming videos or anything and I'm not going to be sharing videos 
I still will be. It will probably be less because I am finding I need more time, as I've mentioned. But it's just going to be that like a, a project will take as long as it needs to take and the editing will take as long as it needs to take for me to be really happy with what it is I'm bringing to you guys. And for the moment, at least, that's kind of what I need to do. I'm going to see how that goes and whether that works. Um, hopefully you guys are understanding and will stick with me even though you know there may be less videos but hopefully like there'll be things that I'm happy to bring out to you guys whether they be just fun things or cool projects or whatever the case may be but I'm not at a time crunch then you know I'm not cutting corners on anything because it's time to upload something so yeah that's basically the update so anyway i hope you guys have enjoyed watching the goblin ball i realize i know i've said it a million times in this video i didn't get as much footage this time well i do have a lot of cool projects i'm hoping to do this year so i hope you stick around hit subscribe if you want to see more from me and for the rest of you i'll see you next time in Faywood. bye guys